Welcome back. This is Professor Ridge, and today's lesson, section 2.5, Other Equations of Lines. I'm going to start off with the point-slope form of a line. So any equation of the form y minus y sub 1 equals m times the quantity x minus x sub 1 is said to be written in the in point slope form and has a graph that is a straight line and just like um, from slope intercept um, we know that the slope of the line is m so m that's your slope and this line passes through or I'm going to say contains the point x sub 1 y sub 1. So that's why it's called point slope form. We're given a slope. We're given a point. So point slope. Okay, so let's try <clears throat> some exercises. Find the equation in the in point slope form of the line having specified slope and containing the given point, then graph the line. So this is exercise 12 from the book m equals 2 and the point is 3, 4. Okay, so we have the point slope form. It's y minus y1 equals m <clears throat> x minus x sub 1. And remember this this is our m. <clears throat> this is x sub 1. And the 4 is y sub 1. So we're going to get y minus y sub 1, which is the 4. m is 2. x minus x sub 1 is 3. Now the thing to notice, <coughs> in the formula, the way that it was written, if you go back up here and look at the, the definition of point-slope form, you got minus x sub 1, and over here is just x sub 1. So that tells you that those signs are opposite between those two. And then the same thing for y. We got minus y sub 1, and over here we just got y sub 1. So if this number 3 for x sub 1 is positive, we do x minus 3, x minus 3. And the y coordinate's 4, so we got y minus 4. All right, so now slope uh, graphing using the point-slope form is just like slope-intercept form, except instead of starting at the y-intercept, you're going to start at this given point, 3, 4. So we're going to plot the point, 3, 4. So starting at 0, 0, go to the right 3, and then up 4. So right about there. And then our slope is 2. Now recall that if slope is 2, we're going to write it as a fraction. So that's going to be up and to the right. Up 2, right 1. Or we can go negative 2 over negative 1, which is down 2, left 1. So if I go up 2, to the right one, or I can go down two to the left one, down two to the left one, so on. And then draw my line through those points. And there you have it.
y minus 4 to x minus 3. Okay, let's try one more of those. So ex exercise 16 m equals 1 and point is negative 5, negative 7. So again we're going to do the y minus y sub 1 equals m x minus x sub 1. That's your point slope form. We're going to put in negative y, y sub 1 is negative 7. So that becomes y plus 7. See, so the sign changes. m is 1. <coughs> x sub 1 is negative 5. So that's going to become x plus 5. So there you go. That is your uh, point slope form. Okay, so to graph, we're going to start at the point negative 5, negative 7, which is right about there. And then from there, we're going to go up 1 to the right 1. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong scale. So negative 5. See, this is 1, 2, oh, that's 3, 4, 5 is right there. So this is negative 5, negative 7. That's where I want to start. Negative 5, negative 7. And then from there, I'm going to go up 1 to the right 1. Because our slope is 1, then we put it over 1, so it's up to the right. <clears throat> up 1 to the right 1. 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 Put my ruler down and draw the line through it. And there you have it. Y plus 7 equals 1. X plus 5. Alright, so let's try another example. Find the equation of the line given a slope and a point. Write final answer as a linear function. So remember that slope-intercept form, but using f of x instead of y. And then graph. So let's try number... 30. So our slope is negative one fifth, and the point is negative two one. Now there's actually two ways that you can find the equation of the line. Um, you can use slope-intercept form since that's the way you want your final answer. Um, plug in what you know. M is negative one fifth. Plug in your x. Plug in your y, and then solve it for b. Or we can use the technique we just learned. We can do, since we got a slope, a slope and a point, or a point and a slope, we can use point slope form. Y minus Y1 equals M X minus X1. They're both pretty much the exact same amount of work, just depends on how you think about it. So again, I'm going to plug in Y1 is 1, M is negative 1 fifth x minus x sub 1 is negative 2. So remember, minus and minus becomes plus. I'm going to distribute the minus 1 fifth. And again, this is plus 1 fifth. I mean, plus 2. So it'll be negative 1 fifth x plus So now I'm going to distribute the negative one-fifth. 
So you get y minus 1 equals negative 1 fifth x minus, because negative times positive is negative. And then think of 2. 2 is a whole number, 2 over 1, so the 2 goes on the top. So it's negative 2 fifths. See, 1 fifth times 2 going to be 2 over 5. Then we're going to add 1 to both sides. So y equals negative 1 fifth x. See, <clears throat> 1 is a f 1 equals 5 fifths. 5 fifths plus negative 2 fifths will be 3 fifths. So that's my final answer in slope intercept form. Oh, I'm sorry, we want our function, linear function. So that was slope intercept form. This is linear function. Just change the y to a f of x. And now to graph. So we'll start at the point negative 2, 1. Right there. And our slope is negative one-fifth, so put the negative on top or bottom. So we're going to go down one to the right five. Or you could do it the other way around. You can go up one to the left five. But we'll do, we'll do it the way I wrote. So down one to the right five. So down one, one, two, three, four, five. Down one to the right five. Right there. Put my ruler down. Draw a line through those three points. So that's f of x equals negative one-fifth x. Plus three-fifths. And notice, I, the way I graphed it, I was using um, the point-slope form because that's nice. But look at the y-intercept right here. That's the point. Zero, three-fifths, as it should be from the slope-intercept form. The y-intercept was three-fifths. So if I go from there, down one to the right five, that would get you this point. It'll be eight. And it'll be exactly the same graph. Okay, so let's try another example. Find an equation containing each pair of points. Write, find, write your final answer as a linear function. So let's try number 38. So we have 3, 8 for our first point, And the second point, 1, 4. Now, to find equation line, you need to know two things. You need to know the slope and a point, and we can use the point-slope form, or you can uh, you need to know a slope and the y-intercept, and then we use slope-intercept form. So, but with either of those forms, you need to know the slope, and all you're given here is two points. And from geometry again, we know that exact Two points gives you exactly one line, so there should be a way to figure out the equation line just given these two points. And back to my uh, uh, first thing, I, uh, whichever form I use, the first thing I need to know is slope. So we have the slope formula for two points. So that's where we start. So we plug in y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. Work that out. We get negative 4 on top, negative 2 on bottom. So our slope is 2. Now we have a slope, which is 2, and a point, And it doesn't matter which point you use. You can use 1, 4, or 3, 8. So let's use 3, 8. And now this is just like question 30. We got a slope. We got a point. 
So we're going to use the point slope form. Y minus Y sub 1 equals M X minus X sub 1. So we get Y minus 8 equals M, which is 2, X minus 3. We want our final answer as a linear function, so that's like slope intercept. Solve it for Y and then change the Y to F of X. So we're going to distribute the 2. And then you're going to add 8 to both sides. So Y equals 2X plus 2. And then you're going to write it as a linear function, so change the y to an f of x. And now you're done. f of x is equal to 2x plus 2. All right, parallel and perpendic perpendicular lines. So we know that if, uh, if you have two lines, two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. So in geometry, we say two lines are par parallel if um, they never intersect. Well, the way that happens, and we look at their slopes, they would have to have identical slopes. So two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. Or, you now this special case, if both lines are vertical, because technically, right, vertical lines, the slope's undefined, so we list these out separately. And two lines are perpendicular, if their slopes are negative reciprocals. So what do I mean by negative reciprocals? And so basically, if slope of 1 is, say, A, slope of line 1 is A over B, comma, then slope of line 2 would have to be negative B over A. So you flip it over. Okay, so they're negative reciprocals. Um, another way we can write this, this is say M1 is equal to 1 over M2. That's reciprocal, and then we make it negative. So it's a negative reciprocal. And then our alternate test would be if you multiply um, reciprocals together, you, you get 1. So if one's positive and one's negative, then you would get negative 1. So here's an alternate test. Or actually, the test you would do is you just take their product, multiply them together, and that has to be negative 1. Okay, so that's actually the way the book defines it, is the product of their slopes equals negative 1. Um, most people just think negative reciprocals, so you flip it over, change the sign. And of course, the, for the special case, if one line's vertical, it has no slope, so um, to be perpendicular to vertical line, the other one has to be horizontal. All right, so an example. So are the two lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So for the first example, line 1 is 3x plus 2y equals 8. And the second line, line 2, 4x minus 6y equals 20. So our first thing is we got to figure out the slope of each. So if I take line 1, solve it for y, so subtract 3x, divide by 2, So our slope is M1, slope for line 1 is what? And if you said negative 3 halves, you would be correct. Now for line 2, we're going to subtract the 4x. Divide by negative 6. Y equals, and that actually reduces to positive two-thirds. This um, 26 reduces to ten-thirds. And our slope for line 2 would be two-thirds. Now you can see that um, Slope for line 1, m sub 1 is negative 3 halves, which if you flip it over, change the sign, you get positive 2 thirds. So since m1 and m2 are negative reciprocals from each other, 
So if we do the test, if we multiply them, 2 thirds times negative 3 halves, you get negative 1, so that tells you the lines are perpendicular. So this is symbol for perpendicular. So you can write the word out, or you can write the symbol, either way. All right, let's try another one. How about 4, well, let me just put it, y equals 3x minus 8, <clears throat> and y equals 1 third x minus, or plus 2. So m sub 1 is 3, m sub 2 is 1 third. Okay, so <clears throat> if m1 equals m2, then they're parallel. If m1 times m2 equals negative 1, then you get perpendicular. So is the <clears throat> Is m1 equal to m2? No. So it's not parallel. Is m1 times m2 equal to negative 1? So if I do m1 times m2, 3 times 1 third, you get positive 1, not negative 1. So it's not parallel. So then you would say neither. So write an equation of a line containing the given point and perpendicular to the given line. So number 82 from the book, negative 2, negative 5. So it goes through that point, and it's perpendicular to x minus 2y equals 3. So my first <clears throat> step is to figure out, remember, when I want to write an equation of a line, there's two things I need to know. I need to know a point or the y-intercept, one or the other, and I need, need to know the slope. But for either method, I need to know what the slope is. So my first step is figure out the slope of the line I want. Well, this line is perpendicular to the line I want. So if we know the, line, the slope of this line, the slope that we want would be perpendicular to that. So first step is figure out the slope of this line. So I'm going to subtract x, divide by negative 2, so that's positive 1 half x. So the slope is 1 half, so the sl perpendicular slope would be equal to negative 2 over 1, which is just negative 2. So we start with that. So now we have the slope, so this kind of scratch work. Now the slope that I want, perpendicular slope, is negative 2, and it contains the point negative 2, negative 5. Now you can use the point-slope form, like I told you. y minus y1 equals m. But let me show you the other technique that I talked about. Is if you want to write an equation in slope-intercept form, write it down. Now this is an x and a y. Plug those in for x and y. And of course our slope is negative 2, so we're going to plug in negative 2. So y we're going to put in negative 5. m is negative 2. x is negative 2 also. And B, that's what we need to figure out to write the equation of line. So now I just solved this equation. Subtract 4 from both sides. So B must be negative 9. Now if you just circled that, you'd be wrong because we've got to write the equation of line. Um, they didn't tell us what form. So we'll just use slope-intercept form since that's what I was going for anyway. So it's y equals mx plus b. We know m is negative 2, and then we just worked out what b was. b is negative 9. So we put minus 9. 
and for B. And now we have our equation of our line. So this line is perpendicular to the original li line that we were given, and it goes through the point negative 2, negative 5. So for 88, same question. It goes through the point negative 0, negative 7, and it's perpendicular to the line 4x plus 3 equals y. So what we got to do is figure out what the slope is of this line. Well, this is slope-intercept form already. you got y equals 4x plus 3, so our slope is 4. So our perpendicular slope is 1 fourth. Flipping it over and change the sign, so it'll be negative 1 fourth. Now, we don't, if you notice, what's special about this point? If the x-coordinate is 0, and I were to plot this, where would this point be? And the answer Hopefully you're saying, oh, that's the y-intercept. So basically there's no more work to do here. We can just plug everything into our slope-intercept form because we know the slope that we want. The perpendicular slope is negative one-fourth, and we know b is negative seven. It was given to us, so we don't have to do any work. And there you go. Okay, so that concludes uh, the lesson for section 2.5 go to my math lab and complete the homework exercises there and see you next time